It's time for the Murders at Karloff Manor pre-release, and let me tell you about what to expect. Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and this weekend, February 2nd, kicks off the pre-release for Murders at Karloff Manor. You'll be able to crack into the mystery of playing the set for the first time at game stores around the world. I love pre-release events so much. The excitement is high as everybody gets to try out the new set for the first time and see how all the new cards work together. Whether you're brand new to the game or a veteran, pre-releases are great. If you aren't as familiar, here's how they work. In every pre-release, you'll be handed one of these, a Murders at Karlov Manor pre-release pack. Inside, you'll find a number of things. For one, a spin down D20. You'll also find one of three promotional cards. These are here to keep, but they are not eligible for your pre-release deck, so don't put them in there. But the core of the experience is, of course, the six booster packs and pre-release card you'll use to build your sealed deck. How exactly does that work? Well, you'll be building a 40 card deck and picking out about 23 creatures and spells to play. You can add as many basic lands as you want, the store will have them on hand, and usually you want about 17 total lands. To help narrow it down, you're probably going to want to pick two colors. You can play more in Murders at Karlov Manor, perhaps two colors with a splash of a third, but especially if you're less experienced, I would really stick to two if you can. Some kinds of cards you really want in sealed deck are evasion, so mechanics like flying, removal to kill off your opponent's creatures, and of course, just generally strong cards and bomb rares. One other thing you should keep in mind is what's called a mana curve. The idea here is that you have strong cards to play at all points of the game. If everything is cheap to cast, you'll run out of gas in the long game. But if everything costs 5 and 6, you'll be too far behind by the time you get to the long game. So what you'll want to do is create a curve of 2 through 6 drops. A well-built limited deck usually has a solid distribution of at least 4 2 mana creatures, 4 3 mana creatures, 3 4 mana creatures, and at least 2 creatures at 5 or more mana. You can, of course, go higher on each of those as long as you aren't dropping lower anywhere else. In this set, it's a little trickier because of disguise. That means you're more likely to have 3 drops to play. I would consider cards that you normally want to play face down on turn 3 as cards that live in your 3 drop slot. This means you can play fewer 3 drops in your deck sometimes accordingly. Now, here's something you might not have thought about before. The mana curve of your non-creatures is good to keep in mind, but can be a bit more varied because you usually play them on a turn other than their mana cost is. For example, Repeat Offender is a card you will play on turn 2, but Presumed Dead probably isn't, so you shouldn't put Presumed Dead in the stack with your 2 drop creatures. That's misleading. In general, when deck building, I make a curve of cards I'm going to play on that turn on top, and then below it, the curve of my spells I won't necessarily play that turn. Okay, so you know what you're building for, but how do you pick it? Well, one other way to get pulled into a color pair is with multicolored cards and color pairings. Every two color combination in Murders at Karloff Manor has its own theme. Each also has a couple of dedicated multicolor uncommons, including one that really points to the theme. Knowing them can help you build the best deck possible and keep your eyes out for signposts on the way there. You don't have to play these strategies if you're in those colors, but they're often what a lot of cards will point you toward. Let me run you through the 10 archetypes. Let's kick it off with something pretty fresh for blue-white, detectives. Look for detective creature type bonuses and clue making to go right into this archetype. Your long game is pretty good because of all the clues, so even if your opponent stops your assault, you still have a lot of staying power. Private Eye is just the card for this, pumping your detectives and letting you get through. Speaking of clues, get a clue with blue-black clue control. This is a pretty typical control strategy, with the twist that if the game goes long, you can have the card advantage upper hand. Thanks to all your clues. And Curious Cadaver, one of the signpost uncommons, points right toward this, ensuring you always have a way to end the game. Moving on to Red Black, we have Suspect Aggro. This deck lets you suspect your opponent's creatures to make them unable to block so you can get through or suspect your own in a pinch to give them menace. Attack, slide your suspects through, and defeat your opponent quickly. Rune Brand Juggler lets you suspect one of your own creatures, itself included, and then sacrifice your suspects to deal with your opponent's creatures. Just what you need to push through damage. Red Green is our first of the three disguise archetypes, and this one is Big Disguises. Play Big Disguise creatures face down to the board, and then flip them up to have some huge monsters. Mana Ramp and ways to hit your land drops are particularly handy here. Tin Street Gossip helps flip up those big creatures, and while being a 4 mana 4-4 four, four Vigilance to boot, attack with it and flip something up in the same combat step. Bam! 
Green White, on the other hand, is all about go wide disguise. Play plenty of disguises to the board to keep your opponent guessing, then flip them up at the perfect times. Sumala Sentry encourages you to do just this, pumping both it and the creature you flip up every time. White Black is the third of the disguise decks and sort of the opposite of Red Green, with tiny disguises. This deck cares about power two or less creatures, which hey, disguised creatures are. You can play all manner of small creatures combined with disguises and cards that reward you for having power two or less, like Wisp Drinker Vampire, which lets your small creatures be a bit more scary. Okay, enough about disguises. Back to clues. Blue-red is an artifact sacrifice deck, and in this set, the easiest artifacts to sacrifice are usually going to be clues. Pick up card advantage and sacrifice clue tokens at just the right time to outmaneuver your opponent, like with Detective Satchel, which gives you clues and then rewards you over time for sacrificing them. Green-black is a graveyard deck. That's no surprise, perhaps, especially for a set all about murders, but in this set you want to get creatures out of your graveyard, and you have a few ways to do it, from returning dead creatures back or just collecting evidence. And Insidious Roots helps make sure you'll have some nice tokens in the process. Red-white is a fun callback in what we'll call Battalion. This deck wants to attack with three creatures, using ways to go wide and combat tricks to make that work out. Notably though, in a difference from the original Battalion, as we see here on Meddling Youths, this creature doesn't have to be one of the three attackers, meaning you can get value the turn you play it or while holding it back. And finally, blue-green. The big question, is it ramp this time? Actually, no, it's collect evidence. In this neat take on blue-green, you want to do some self-mill and then kick up your big collect evidence cards. Don't be afraid to put some expensive cards in your deck too to mill away and then use for evidence. Evidence Examiner is just the card for this deck, giving you a bonus every time you collect evidence. All right. That's all 10 archetypes. Which do you want to play the most? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll talk with you again soon. And until then, have fun preparing for your pre-release. You got this. Up next is Deadly Disguise, a green, white, red deck which brings face down mechanics into one place. Morph, Manifest, and yes, even Mega Morph all show up alongside the brand new disguise mechanic to make a real face down menagerie. Three mana 2-2s aren't exactly winning any efficiency wars in Commander, so there's plenty of cards to make them well worth